Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 8th, 2017. The Cooner Report, presented by Kelly Financial Services. This is the Cooner Report. 1235. That's all I have to say. Trust me when I tell you this. Tune in. Set your watches, whatever you're doing, your lunch hour, I don't care what you're doing, from 12.35 till about, ooh, 12.47, 12.48, okay? Tune in to the Cooner Report, because I've got one hell of an interview for you with Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates, who is also a key member on the House Judiciary Committee. He annihilated... FBI Director Christopher Ray yesterday. This guy is a rising star in the Republican Party, and I don't think I've ever seen somebody destroy a bureaucrat and get to the essence of what is going on with the Robert Mueller investigation, the corruption of the FBI, and the need for a special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton. So we're going to have it for you at 1235. You don't want to miss it. It was pre-taped yesterday afternoon. Ay, ay, ay. Now, speaking of Congressman Gates, I have a column up based off of that interview. Please, Cooner Country, I'm asking all of you, it is now time for us to say enough is enough. Go to WRKO.com. It is right there, Cooner's Corner. Time to appoint a special counsel to investigate Hillary. Because as Congressman Gates laid out yesterday brilliantly, when he was questioning Christopher Wray, the uh, the new FBI director, who testified in front of the House Judiciary Committee, as um, Congressman Gates clearly laid out, the investigation into Hillary Clinton was not just botched, it was rigged. It was a predetermined sham. And it was led by James Comey. This occurred under Loretta Lynch and the Obama administration. Robert Mueller is now desperately trying to cover up how politicized and corrupt and compromised the FBI has become. And so we now know that the fix was in, that they exonerated Hillary Clinton before they even interviewed her, before they even interviewed many of the key players involved in setting up her private email server in which classified sensitive information was clearly mishandled and and hacked and violated that the FBI is now full of pro-Hillary partisans and never-Trump, rabid never-Trumpers, whose goal it was was to protect and shield Hillary and make sure, no matter what, that they create the illusion of an investigation when their job was to coddle, shield, and protect her. In other words, the original FBI investigation was tainted from the beginning. And so a growing group of House Republicans, led by Congressman Matt Gates, are now demanding that the FBI and in particular Senator sorry, Attorney General Jeff Sessions and oh boy, does he give it to the uh, to Sessions in the interview. But I, I want you to hear it. Matt Gates is now saying it is time for the FBI and it is now time for Attorney General Sessions to admit how compromised and corrupt the original FBI investigation into Hillary was. And it is now time for a second special counsel, this time to investigate Hillary Clinton, all of her crimes, Benghazi, the email server, Uranium One, the Clinton Foundation, bribery, influence peddling, perjury, obstruction of justice. In other words, it's time for Hillary to face real justice. 
listen now to the fireworks yesterday in front of the House Judiciary Committee where Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates goes right after the weasel Chris Ray you want to talk about a lying apparatchik whoa -ho! Chris Ray was undressed so he asks the FBI director question number one was Hillary Clinton given preferential treatment Listen now to the stunning answer. Roll cut one, Brittany. You said that your safe space is to follow the rules. Were the rules followed in the Hillary Clinton investigation? <clears throat> That's something that's being investigated right now by the outside inspector general. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he finds on that. Yeah, you and me both. Did she get special treatment? Well, again, I think when you ask about special treatment, um, I, I interpret that, and I may not be correctly interpreting your question, in which case I'm sure you'll tell me. Um, but I take that to be a question about whether or not the handling of that investigation was tainted in some way by improper political considerations, and that's exactly what the Inspector General is going to tell us. In other words, listen to this, the FBI director cannot say on the record, no, it was a proper investigation, it was on the up and up. He's admitting now, well, there's an Inspector General, an IG, looking into this, and I really can't say. So basically, it's a non-denial denial. He's basically saying, look, guys, don't talk to me. Talk to the IG, but something is rotten in Denmark. Or in this case, something is rotten at the FBI. So Matt Gates now presses even more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Was Hillary given special preferential treatment? Was she a quote-unquote special person? Listen to this. Cut to Brittany. Well, I think the reference to classified information went to the other part of your letter, which has to do with the, the dossier issues. Um, but oh, so the, let's talk but about the, that. But so on the but on the first part on this question of special treatment, um, what I would tell you, because uh, I think this was one of the questions in your letter, um, is that we do not have at the FBI some double standard of special not special it's not a there's no formal term special special as best i can tell so it's an informal term it's an informal term yeah you could see how that informally designating something as special signifies a double standard right yes i i did this to me my jaw dropped when i saw that i mean first who admit first of all that he admits it to me was stunning but what so you have now the FBI director Chris the Weasel Ray okay and boy was he weaseling in that chair oh shifting moving dodging oh my god this guy's gonna clean up the FBI oh please okay but let that go openly admitting well no it's not formal I mean we're not gonna tell the whole world you know Hillary Clinton is quote unquote special and the rest of you peasants are quote unquote not special that we have essentially two tiers of justice, one for the powerful, especially the Democrats who are politically connected, and then the rest, uh, you know, everybody else we destroy. But it's informal. It's, we don't say it, but it's, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. What? what? Now, uh, Congressman Gates is going to say even a lot more on this in, in the interview with me at 1235. Trust me. Oh, oh, this is just the tip of the iceberg, okay? But so now you have the FBI admitting on record, this was all on record and under oath, that yes, Hillary did get preferential treatment. Yes, she was des viewed as a special person. It just wasn't formal. It was kind of like informal, like we just kind of among ourselves. So yeah, you know... Don't, you know, just let her go, okay? She's a special person, and, uh, you know, she's special. So you treat her differently, you treat her better, you treat her with kid gloves, than you do, you know, peasants like, I don't know, Mike Flynn. So, then Gates, really roughing him up, then says, well, hold on. What about the Russian, the infamous Trump dossier, the infamous Russian dossier that was paid for by the DNC, the Hillary Clinton campaign, through Fusion, Fusion GPS, that hired this former British spy, Christopher Steele, who then spoke to his Russian intelligence contacts to try to dig up dirt on Trump. 
Did the FBI pay for this dossier? Did they want to hire Christopher Steele? In other words, were they colluding with the Hillary Clinton campaign during the election, forget trying to exonerate her and protect her, to actually help her defeat a presidential candidate? Roll cut three, Brittany. Don't the American people deserve to know whether taxpayer money was used to buy a dossier that was curated by a political party to discredit the President of the United States before and after his election? As I said, I understand the basis for the question, but I would tell you that questions on that subject are something that we're having lots and lots of interaction with multiple congressional committees and their staffs on in a classified setting. He wouldn't answer. He kept dodging. Everything is classified. Either he kept saying this, either it's classified, classified setting, meaning we don't want the public to know. The, and if we tell you in a classified setting, you're not allowed to leak it to the public or else you could be prosecuted. So in other words, yeah, but we don't want the American people to know. Or uh, the inspector general. Ah, leave it to the inspector general. Don't talk to me. Talk to the inspector general. Now, I want you to think about this. This is another non-denial denial. This to me, when I, I, that one, I'm like, whoa. He cannot categorically come out and say, we didn't pay for the Trump dossier, or the dossier, as uh, Maxine Waters would call it, because they were in on it. It's now all going to come out. They did pay for the dossier. They did want to hire Christopher Steele. They were colluding with Fusion GPS and this British spy and the Hillary Clinton campaign to help Hillary and dig up dirt on Trump using a British spy to collude with the Russians. This is to me, it's now crystal clear and now they're desperately trying to sweep this under the rug. So, Matt Gates keeps going, baby. He's not stopping now. So then he says, hold on. You've got Peter Strzok, who we now know had to be demoted to the Human Resources Department because he was caught sending texts to his mistress, Lisa Page, where he's openly going on about how rabidly pro-Hillary he is and anti-Trump he is. The guy who interviewed Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills, even though they lied repeatedly, he gave them pass after pass after pass. Then we find out there's Andrew Weissman, another top FBI investigator, Mueller's right-hand man, who we now find out was supporting um, Sally Yates and congratulating her on text messages, saying, yeah, you defy Trump's travel ban, good for you. So we know that Mueller has loaded his team up with pro-Hillary, anti-Trump partisans. You call this... An impartial, independent investigation above politics? Roll cut for Brittany. Did Bob Mueller recruit people to his probe that had a bias against the president? I can't speak to how Director Mueller staffed or recruited for his team. It seems like a hell of a coincidence. I mean, we've got Mr. Strzok, who's clearly got a bias. That's why he was reassigned. He's at the center of a lot of the development of facts. you got Mr. Weissman, who's praising people who are defying the president. And then you have law firms that are overwhelmingly donating to the Obama campaign and the Clinton campaign that serve up the humans that are in that investigation. So you can't say with certainty that bias against the president wasn't a factor that brought people into the Mueller probe, can you? As I said, I'm not going to weigh in on Director Mueller's staffing of his own uh, team. <laughs> no comment. Meaning it's true. Uh, it's true. Uh, you're embarrassing me now. So, then Gates just cuts his throat and just says, you know what? The FBI has been completely compromised. You know it, we know it, and the American people know it. It's corrupt from A to Z. Here is the knockout blow. Roll it, Brittany. So we've got an exoneration statement drafted before the interviews are done. You've got a meeting on the tarmac with the spouse of someone that is being investigated. You've got the former FBI director holding a press conference to make a determination about the outcome of an investigation. You've got James Clapper, when he's confronted with information from an intelligence inspector general, uh, saying that he doesn't want anything to be a headache for the Clinton campaign. 
We don't know if these taxpayer funds were used for opposition research. My question is, what's it going to take? Why do we have to wait for an inspector general? If I walk outside and it's raining, I don't need an inspector general to tell me to get an umbrella. With these highly aberrational circumstances, which almost anyone would acknowledge depart from the standard procedures of the FBI, why wait for an inspector general? Why not do what we know to be right and institute reforms that bring transparency and oversight and redundancy so that in the future you don't have some egomaniac, rogue FBI director that departs from the normal procedures so that outcomes can be predetermined before the investigation. As I said before, and as Congressman Gowdy said in his question to me, I think it's appropriate that we wait in this instance until we have all the facts, until the last witness, as he said, has been interviewed. Oh, now, look at this. When they were investigating Hillary. No, well, we don't need to interview all the witnesses. No, we, we know. We know already. We don't need to interview her, the witnesses. She's going to be exonerated. Now, when they're uncovering all of this FBI corruption and collusion with Hillary Clinton and the campaign, the complete politicization of the FBI, suddenly, uh, you know, come on now. Let's not jump the gun here. Come on, the, the, the last witness is interviewed. They're stonewalling, and they're doing everything they can to try to sweep this under the rug. A star was born yesterday, and his name is Representative Matt Gates. 1235, we're going to have an interview with him. You don't want to miss it. My question to you now is this. Is the FBI now fatally tainted and compromised? Is should there now be a special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton because the first investigation was clearly a sham? Is the FBI now in need of massive reform and house cleaning? I say yes. What do you say? All of your calls next. It seems like a hell of a coincidence. I mean, we've got Mr. Strzok, who's clearly got a bias. That's why he was reassigned. He's at the center of a lot of the development of facts. you got Mr. Weissman, who's praising people who are defying the president. And then you have law firms that are overwhelmingly donating to the Obama campaign and the Clinton campaign that serve up the humans that are in that investigation. So you can't say with certainty that bias against the president wasn't a factor that brought people into the Mueller probe, can you? As I said, I'm not going to weigh in on Director Mueller's staffing of his own uh, team. 1227 here on the great WRKO. Have you lost confidence in the FBI? Congressman Matt Gates, a powerful member now of the House Judiciary Committee, just yesterday torched, I mean took a blowtorch, to FBI Director Chris Wray. And let me throw one more log on the fire. I mentioned this in my column, which I urge all of you, please go to WRKO.com, Cooner's Corner, time to appoint a special counsel to investigate Hillary. Where is Jeff Sessions? And you're going to hear in the interview coming up at 1235, Gates actually confronted Sessions about what are you waiting for? It's time to investigate Hillary and have a special probe or a special counsel. You're going to see Gates' answer, or what Gates, whatever, what he recollects, and Sessions' answer is going to blow your mind. What is Jeff Sessions afraid of? And if he's not up to the job, it's time for him to step aside and resign. Arthur and Chestnut Hill, you're up first. Thanks for holding, and welcome. Thanks, uh, thanks. You know that song from The Who? Uh, we won't get fooled again. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, you know something. This is this, this is absolutely despicable. I mean, uh, the FBI works for the for, for the president, and you know they also have secret files. You don't suppose they have something on Jeff Sessions? But, uh, th th there's something that stinks to heaven. All these FBI people that have been exposed, they shouldn't even be in the FBI. They should have been, uh, you know, suspended without leave pending investigation. And the, and the, and the IG, you know, it doesn't have prosecu prosecuting powers, okay, and shouldn't even be at, at this level and at this point, and with all the information that has been exposed, the IG should have been removed a long time ago, and maybe a, a, an independent force is taking over because this is a sham, a joke, 
and an affront to the American people. And we know what the FBI's like. We look at how they handle Whitey Bulger here in Boston. Uh, Arthur, you're, you're dead on. Absolutely dead on, and thank you for that call. Look, here's what we're finding out. Robert Mueller essentially is acting as an arm of the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC. James Comey was essentially acting as an arm of the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign. Peter Strzok, uh, Andrew Weissman, you can run down the whole Weissman, you can run down the whole list now, okay? Uh, all of them were now effectively acting as an arm or an extension of the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign. The FBI under Obama and Comey became thoroughly compromised, thoroughly corrupted. And so at 1235, I'm telling you, you got to listen to this interview because Matt Gates confronts Jeff Sessions and asks him, what are you afraid of? It's time for a special counsel. You're not going to believe what Matt Gates relays, what he reveals. Jackie Murphy is up with the latest news first. And then at 1235, tune in for a, a blockbuster of an interview. Welcome back to the Cooner Report and the man of the hour himself, Florida Congressman Matt Gates. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report and welcome. Well, it's good to be back on. You know, whenever I'm on, I get a lot of folks from your listening area that will call in and say, we're listening to Cooner, and that's why we're calling you. So you have a very dedicated and activist listening group. Well, thank you so much, uh, Congressman. I got to say, I saw the fireworks yesterday between you and FBI Director Chris Ray. I mean, you tore him apart. I mean, you well, took him to the woodshed. And I want to ask you this. What was the most shocking thing? for you in that whole exchange with the FBI director. What surprised just, you the most? I, I, I got to tell you, Jeff, I just don't understand why they're still waiting around at the FBI to make changes so that we don't give special treatment to politicians in the future. I mean, we have emails from the current deputy director of the FBI saying that the Hillary Clinton investigation will be special. We have Mr. Strzok, Peter Strzok, who is a biased anti-Trump FBI agent who loves Hillary Clinton that was at the center of both investigations. And yet the FBI thinks that we've got to sort of wait around for a while and get a few reports back before we actually make the changes that restore the rule of law in this country. So that was disappointing. But if there was anything that was encouraging, Jeff, it was the response to my friend Andy Biggs' question. He said, if we can prove that Hillary Clinton never was truly investigated, that James Comey made this decision to exonerate her before ever sincerely conducting a review of the facts. Would Christopher Wray reopen the investigation into Hillary Clinton? And he said he just might, if that's where the facts lead. I think that's the kind of restoration of law and order that people wanted when they voted for Donald Trump and Republicans in the last election. Congressman, there was a very particularly interesting exchange where you asked, is there a formal delineation of, you know, special and not special? And Christopher Ray, the FBI director, shockingly said, well, it's not formal, it's more informal. Do you believe that the FBI under Comey became so politicized that they did treat Hillary differently? that she was given a, quote, special informal designation. And do you think that the investigation itself was tainted? And should we have another investigation, a fresh one, into Hillary's crimes and the use of her email server? Absolutely we should. Twenty members of the Judiciary Committee have called for a special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton because she was never investigated in the first place. And the fact that the FBI director would admit that there's no formal system for a de uh, an investigation being deemed special. It's not as if, well, we're crossing multi-jurisdiction, so we're going to build a special team, and we have a way to report that and a way to be transparent about it. No. These were just people that wanted to have the outcome that they desired for their politics, and so they wanted the Washington field office that would typically handle an investigation like this to keep their hands off. 
to stay away. They wanted, and I'm directly quoting now, an email from the current deputy director of the FBI who was in the Washington field office. He sent around an email that said, and I quote, a small team at headquarters would be the team that would investigate Hillary Clinton. That is not the same justice that everybody else gets, and I think it is sickening that we're not cleaning house, starting over, getting a real set of protocols and procedures in place that protect the rule of law and that would treat every American equally. Did it shock you when FBI Director Ray said that it's almost common practice in the FBI or whatever, it's prevalent to exonerate somebody before they've even been interviewed or the investigation was complete, or he says even incriminate somebody. In other words, when you asked him, hey, was this investigation predetermined, he pretty much said, yeah, and it's standard operating procedure. Did that shock well, you? That, you have correctly summarized the testimony of the FBI director. I thought that the most compelling argument against that was made by my friend Trey Gowdy. Trey Gowdy said, look, every day in America, we tell juries not to make their mind up until all the facts are in. We tell them, you know, to, to keep your mind clear, get all the facts, and then render a verdict. And yet at the FBI, apparently there's a system where you can sort of figure out where you want to go with the conclusion of an investigation before you've even interviewed everyone. And in this case, Hillary Clinton herself wasn't even interviewed when James Comey started drafting her exoneration. Now, that interview of Hillary Clinton, interestingly present in that interview, was Peter Strzok the discredited FBI agent who not only helped clear Hillary Clinton, but then was drafted to the Mueller investigation to try to smear President Trump, and now he's been reassigned to the Human Resources Department. Another thing we don't know is whether or not you had to hate Donald Trump to be on the Mueller team. I asked that question of Christopher Ray. I said, can you say here with certainty that there wasn't a litmus test where Bob Mueller was only taking people that he knew were predetermined to be biased against the president. And he could not answer that question, and that should trouble all Americans. Congressman, let me put you on the spot. Do you have full confidence in FBI Director Chris Wray? Was he on the level with you in the way he answered your questions? Well, we're going to have to get more answers. I am not confident in the answers we have received. And I'm not confident with the lack of urgency to get answers. You know, the, the American people don't want to be told to sit around and wait, and a bunch of bureaucrats in Washington are going to prepare a report. We've been waiting long enough for justice. And so I am not confident that there is a sense of urgency that the American people want and that the Congress is going to demand going forward. We are talking with Florida Congressman Republican Matt Gates, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, who is now spearheading an effort in the House to have the FBI reopen the investigation into Hillary Clinton to investigate, essentially, the investigators. Uh, Congressman Gates, let me ask you then this point blank. Do you think the Mueller investigation has been fatally tainted with all of the rabid Hillary partisans? You mentioned Andrew Weissman. You mentioned Peter Strzok. You mentioned people around him. Uh, do you believe that it's time to shut down the Mueller investigation because this is really a political witch hunt and not an objective search for justice? Well, we absolutely should. And you know who has the power to do that? Jeff Sessions. I mean, we need the Attorney General to step up and do his job. The Attorney General sees the same things we see, and I believe he's a man of integrity who understands the rule of law. And so if Jeff Sessions was a strong leader at the Department of Justice, he would say, I've seen enough. I've seen enough of the bias that exists on, uh, on, in Mueller's team. I've seen Mueller, you know, crawling around in areas that have got nothing to do with the 2016 election, like the, what, the Trump family's finances on real estate deals well before he was even a candidate for President of the United States. And I think we should shut this down. I think we really do need to have a focus on whether or not Hillary Clinton was ever sincerely investigated. And then I think we need to move on as a country and make sure that this never happens again. But Jeff Sessions is the man who has the power to stop this witch hunt, and he needs to step up and do it, or he needs to step aside, and we need to find an attorney general who will. Have you spoken to Attorney General Jeff Sessions or written him a letter? I have. I went and met with, with Jeff Sessions in his office. 
I forcefully made the case that we need another special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton, and that I felt that his recusal was making it very difficult to determine who was in charge of the Department of Justice anymore. And frankly, I, I kind of felt like Jeff Sessions was an employee at the Department of Justice and not the Attorney General because he kept looking to these long-term staffers to provide answers to what should be basic questions coming from the leader of that agency. So I I'm deeply concerned that Jeff Sessions hasn't lived up to the promise that we should have as our Attorney General in the Trump administration. And I but there's still time. I mean, if, if today... Jeff Sessions came out, exposed these text messages that evidence bias, that exposed these emails where Andrew Weissman is praising people for defying orders from the President of the United States, and he could say, we're not doing this anymore. But he hadn't done that yet, and we're going to keep calling on him to do so until he does. I'm just curious, why do you think Sessions, I guess what he told you was, he's not sure about whether to appoint a special counsel to investigate Hillary. Am I wrong? Well, you're right, but I mean, what in the hell are we waiting for? I mean, you know, we, we, we've got all the evidence in the world that Hillary Clinton was essentially being evaluated by her own fan club. And that there was, no, I mean, we had uh, Miss Mills, Miss Samuelson, the key confidants of Hillary Clinton, given immunity deals out of the gate, and we got nothing for it. And so you had, you had a Justice Department that was wrapping itself around the, the political conveniences of Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. So I think there's overwhelming evidence of a pro-Hillary bias. I think there's overwhelming evidence of an anti-Trump bias. And that's why we have political leadership of these agencies. The reason that it's not just career people that run the agencies of government is because they have to be accountable in a political system. And our political appointees, Jeff Sessions and Christopher Wray, they're capable people. I think they know the difference between right and wrong. But it's almost like they've got Stockholm Syndrome at their own agencies, where they've become sympathetic with their captors at the Department of Justice and at the FBI. And I think they've got a real opportunity to step up, show leadership, fix the problem, drain the swamp, attack the challenges that exist within the deep state, and then let's restore the American people's confidence in our Department of Justice, and in our FBI, because that's essential for our country moving forward. We need to have confidence in these important institutions, and the behavior we've seen so far deprives us of that confidence. Congressman, I know we're pressed for time, but I, I want to ask you one final question. When you met with Jeff Sessions, and you described, I think, very eloquently and powerfully, how he's look, almost acting like an employee of the Justice Department. He's looking to uh, other members on the staff to tell him what to say and what to think. What is it with him? Why is he so reluctant to pull the trigger and appoint a special counsel to look into Hillary Clinton? Is it because he's not up he's for not it? He's not a reluctant man. I mean, look, look at the great work Jeff Sessions has done on immigration. You know, look at the generational progress he's made so that conservatives aren't silenced or prejudiced on college campuses. I mean, I think there's a lot of good things Jeff Sessions doing where he's showing bold leadership. But there is something about this uh, Hillary Clinton stuff, the Clinton Foundation, Uranium One, Russia, Fusion GPS dossiers that were likely paid for by the FBI along with the Democratic Party, where, where he's been just far too reluctant to be the leader that I know he can be. And so I wish I knew why we were seeing such reluctance on the part of Jeff Sessions and Christopher Wray. Uh, but our job in the Congress is to perform our oversight duties, to continue to expose the truth, to demand the truth. And ultimately, these folks have got to do their job or somebody else is going to be appointed who will. Congressman, I got to tell you, in all my years in radio, and I have I interviewed President Trump when he was a candidate, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul. Uh, this is one of the best interviews I've ever had. I'm telling you right now, you got an incredible career in politics in front of you. You oh, are a rising kind. star in the Thank Republican you again Party. Thank listeners for all their positive feedback. Well, uh, Congressman, I got to tell you, if things don't work out for you in Florida, I think they will. I think, honestly, you're on your way to the Senate and God knows where else. But if things don't, um, if things don't work out for you in Florida, you come on down to Massachusetts because we could use you here in Mass. All right. Well, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate you having me on. Congressman Matt Gates, thank you so much, and, and we'll talk to you soon. Keep up the good fight. All right. Thank you. Take care.
We have been talking with Congressman Matt Gates, Florida Republican, a key member on the House Judiciary Committee. What did you make of his comments? Your reaction, your calls, next. WRKO. Our political appointees, Jeff Sessions and Christopher Ray, they're capable people. I think they know the difference between right and wrong, but it's almost like they've got Stockholm Syndrome at their own agencies, where they've become sympathetic with their captors at the Department of Justice and at the FBI, and I think they've got a real opportunity to step up, show leadership, fix the problem, drain the swamp, attack the challenges that exist within the deep state, and then let's restore the American people's confidence in our Department of Justice. 1255, that was Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, who just dismantled, I mean torched, FBI Director Chris Wray. Uh, that was his interview that he conducted with me. It was pre-taped. We did it yesterday afternoon. We just aired it. Uh, if you want, please go to WRKO.com. Uh, please read, pass along my latest column, Cooner's Corner. Uh, it's time for a special counsel to investigate Hillary. Gates is calling for one. Many of Trump's allies are saying it's time to take the, glo- to take the gloves off. And we're going to be discussing this, by the way, with Ambassador John Bolton, this, Jerusalem, many other issues at 105. You don't want to miss it. So let me ask you this. Is Congressman Gates correct? Is he correct? Is it time for Trump to appoint, or in this case, Sessions, to appoint a special counsel to investigate Hillary? I say yes. What do you say? Jerry on the Cape, you're up next. Go ahead, Jerry. Comrade. Comrade, how you are, my friend? I am well. (laughs) Comrade, the deep state and the shadow government refuse to succumb to the will of the people. It's obvious now. Christopher Ray, the fidelity beyond reproach, I believe he is a deep state operative. Jeff Sessions, I believe, is being blackmailed, Jeff, by the Clinton cartel. I think they're threatening his family and stuff, and they're holding him at bay. And the FBI needs to purge all upper management of leadership and reset with patriotic, non-ideological agents for promotions to leadership. And lastly, Jeff... It's been revealed that H.R. McMaster, using the NSA, was spying on Paul Manafort, Steve Bannon, and Jared Kushner before the election. So basically what you're saying is he has fifth columnists within his own inner circle. Trump is surrounded by them. Thank you for that call, Jerry. Bruce in Woburn. Go ahead, Bruce. Hey, Jeff. I'm hey, Bruce. Right now, we might not have a wall, but we get a gate, and that's a good start. These these people, they, they think they can get away with it just because they were backing Hillary, thinking that she was going to get in. But she didn't get in, Jeff, did she? She didn't get in. And they 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 thought that they had it all, like, stacking up cordwood. Well, we ain't cordwood. We're the American people, and we're not standing for this anymore. Amen, brother. And look, that's to me is what I find very heartening, is that you have some real genuine patriots up on Capitol Hill who are now going to expose this massive corruption and the politicization of the FBI. And it's about time, because the deep state, the permanent bureaucracy, we can now see it. It is staffed with Hillary Obama Democratic hacks. And now they're trying to bring down this president. Enough is enough. Russ, I've got a minute. The floor is yours. Go. Jeff, as far as I'm concerned, the left has something on Jeff Sessions. He's been blackmailed not to open up this investigation. I cannot see any other logical reason for him stonewalling this. And the whole FBI has to be turned upside down. And I'll tell you what, I honestly, okay, feel that we're under bondage by an overpowering central government. And Trump, as far as I'm concerned, is Moses trying to free him from free us from bondage. And there's there's a million pharaohs out there trying to screw us. Uh, Russ, thank you for that call. And look, I got to tell you, 
It's now time for the president to stand up. Either he drains the swamp or the swamp swallows him. Coming up next, new revelations on how corrupt the FBI is. Ay ay ay. Ambassador Bolton will discuss it. Don't touch that dial. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 937 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's one o'clock.